Hey, morning folks. It's Jermaine, Leanne and Theo here from Team Monkey and Barefoot. Say morning, Blunks. Hello. Um, and today we wanted to do a video for you looking at um, some ways to help make travelling with a baby a little bit easier. Um, now we know at this time of year there are a lot of families who are going away, um, trying to have a trip, a last trip before the summer holiday ends. And so we just wanted to cover um, a few of the lessons that we've learned along the way about how to make travelling with a, with a baby under one um, go a little bit smoother. Um, so Leanne, you want to kick us off? And yeah, on? I'll kick off. And I'll say firstly that we're going to cover um, tips around three broad themes. Um, so they are kind of mobility, getting Theo around, plus also he's quite active at the minute. Um, food, because we've just started introducing solids. And also his sleep, because we've got him into kind of a good sleep routine and we'd want to keep that while we're away. So if we take mobility first, um, one of our top tips there is to oh. take your own car seat. And I think that was really important one for us because when we went on our last trip we actually hired a car seat from the car rental company and that was a bit tricky actually when we picked it up because they can't help you fit the car seat or give you any advice and so we found that a bit tricky at first so if you have your own car seat and you know how it works then it can make that transition from playing into your car kind of a lot easier. I think that's right and it also helps um, in, term, in terms of cost so hiring a car seat, um, it can be really, really expensive, um, depending on where you go, depending on where you go. Um, and whilst there are some places abroad where they've got different rules about car seats, actually, if a UK car seat or a US car seat is legal in wherever you're going, then carrying it can save you a lot of money. Yeah. Um, we bought a fifteen pound bag um, from Amazon just to transport his car seat in, and we know that we're going to have. Um, something that's really, really safe and secure for him compared to about £70 that it would cost to hire a car seat for about a week in the in Europe. Yeah, um, I think you've hit on a key point though as well for me, which is um, the confidence you have in the car seat. So we, we know about Theo's car seat from home, we're confident using it, we know that he's kind of safe in there. So I think that's a big thing when you're, when you're abroad, maybe travelling on foreign roads that you're not used to, having that one less thing to think about. 100%. Okay, okay, that's so a good one. The car seat. So that's kind of getting him around. The other one is his mobility. So he's now quite active, he's rolling, he likes to be engaged in different things. So um, I would say to take things to keep him entertained, and that could be a seat for him that he can sit in and play with his toys, or a play mat that you can kind of like put down in your hotel room or anywhere else that you are, that he can then use some of his energy and... <laughs> keep exploring the surroundings while we're away. But one of the reasons it's also so important for me is, you know, when you go away and you want to try and have your break yourself, um, you don't always want to just be carrying baby around. And actually, for, for most of us at home, um, we would tend to have, um, we tend to put baby down in some kind of chair when they're, um, when, when we're doing kind of bits and pieces around the house. And I just think it's a good thing to be able to kind of, be able to have the same kind of flexibility when you go away. Um, so it's, it's really for your own benefit as well, just to make sure you've got, you can put baby down, get a little bit of a break for yourself, um, and, and, and just relax a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's really true. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to cover on mobility, unless there's anything else you had. But if not, then I'll move on to food. So as I said, we just started introducing solids to Theo, so he's having a few purees and some finger foods. And so, um... For us, it's really important that he has somewhere that he can sit and actually enjoy his food, explore it. So a travel high chair, I think, would be really useful at the moment, now that we're, we're away. Because otherwise, he'd sit on one of our laps and it's just... Yeah, I think it's a lot better if he had his own high chair. And again, it's somewhere else that he can sit. And I think for me, like the, the high chair, the reason it's so important is because um, I want his social skills to, to develop. And so it, when he's in the high chair, he's obviously at the table with you. Um, there's a stronger sense of him actually being involved in what you're doing as a family. Um, whereas, you know, if he were in just his normal chair or rocker, he'd be down on the floor. Um, so the high chair is a great way of actually um, getting baby's social skills more involved. Uh, and a travel high chair doesn't have to be very expensive at all. You can just pick him up. You can pick him up from loads of places. Uh, and just something to, that, that could help there. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I think they like a bit of independence as well, don't they? So having, having your own seat and your own tray with your food on it, I think is a, is a great thing. Um, 
And so then I guess the last thing we'll cover then is um, tips and things that we would do to help Theo when he's sleeping. And one of the big ones that I would say is um, I would take his baby monitor with us. Um, we had a recent experience where we were away for the weekend, um, staying in kind of a big house with lots of other people. And because we didn't bring the baby monitor with us, when Theo went to bed, one of us had to stay with him. Whereas if we had the baby monitor, then we could have quite easily, as we do at home, put him to sleep, he could have gone to sleep, and we could have then um, carried on engaging with all the other people that we were with um, while he was sleeping and just kept an eye on him on the monitor. Another great tip, um, just to help with that, is if you've got two phones, or say a phone and an iPad, you can do a FaceTime call from your phone to your iPad and use that to double up as a baby monitor. Um, so the iPad you can just have looking over the over the baby and then you can watch them on your phone. So a really cost effective, easy way in case you do forget the monitor. But it's just to think about that so you can so you can have that option a little bit more uh, to just enjoy yourselves and again have a little bit of a break from from baby duties. Yeah, and I think it also works if you're in if you've got um more more space than just a room if you're away as well say if you've got a hotel room that's got a separate living area or a balcony or something like that then um we could do that we could put theo down to sleep put the baby monitor on or do the facetime thing that jermaine spoke about and actually go and have a drink together on the balcony or in a different room or play some cards or do do those kind of things just to get some allows you i think to get some kind of couple time as well while the baby's sleeping especially because babies at Theo's age now, they tend to go to sleep a bit earlier, so seven or eight o'clock, and you may not be ready to finish your evening at that time. Um, and then I think the last one that I would say would be um, to take a bug net, and that can actually be useful over the buggy if you're out and about, but also you can put it over the cot while um, baby's sleeping. So you may be somewhere where there are mosquitoes or something like that, and just give you that bit of confidence actually that while while you're sleeping and while baby's sleeping that you know that they're going to be okay in there so i think we were again on, away for the day recently and there were lots and lots of wasps around and then we saw another family and they just had a bug net over the buggy and didn't have to worry about the wasps on the baby at all whereas i felt like i was constantly fanning wasps away from theo or thinking about it so I think, depending on where you're going, a bug net could be a really useful little thing. Yeah, I think if it's hot or near the water, and or near the water, then it's definitely worth doing. Yeah. So I think, I think that's all the things that I, I talked about before. Is there anything else that... So I think those are... Pretty, no, I think those are, I think those are pretty, uh, three pretty good areas. So I mean, I guess at, at around this kind of six, six to 12 month stage, you know, we know that there's a huge development with babies and they tend to be um, far more inquisitive. They tend to move around a lot more. And of course, baby weaning is also a really big part of everyday life. Um, and I think those are the kind of key things that we found we needed to just think a little bit more about when we were traveling. And, and actually, it's just making sure that you can, you can cater for, for baby's developmental needs. Um, so yeah, I think, I think those, those really good tips um, around the car seat, the high chair, uh, I'm trying to make sure I summarise everything now. Yes. Car seat, high chair, um, something for him to um, a play mat. Yes, or a seat. Um, his seat, mm. um, the, the, baby, the monitors, baby monitors, the bug net. I think you covered everything, well remembered. Hopefully, hopefully that means, that, <laughs> yeah. means we, that means we were listening. I think those kind of things, they make a, they make a really big difference. But it's those small moments when you kind of just want to um, you, you, you want not to have to worry about yeah. a few of the, the normal things that you'd worry about with a baby. Those are the kind of things that I think help yeah. um, alleviate that kind of thinking. I think so, and hopefully it's helpful because these are things that really <coughs> just didn't cross our mind when we went away the first time, really. And so it's based on our kind of lessons learnt from our trip. And so hopefully it's helpful in terms of giving you maybe some things that aren't so obvious yeah. to think about when you're packing. Definitely. And guys, as ever, if you've got any comments or questions, um, then do just leave them in the comments box or, uh, in the comments box, or leave any feedback for us and yeah. we'll get back to you and we'll get back to you pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but if not, we hope you've really enjoyed this video and find it useful um, when you're getting yourself ready for your travels with your youngster. <laughs> <laughs> I would also
also say that if you've got any tips, anything that we haven't covered that you think would be useful, then we'd love to hear from you because, yeah, we'd, we're always looking for ways to improve our travelling okay. experience and with Theo, so that would be great. And as ever, please do make sure you share this video with anyone who would find it useful. Um, so if you know anyone who's travelling with a baby, um, and hopefully a baby who's a little bit less, <laughs> yeah. less windy than our one here, um, if you know anyone who's travelling with a baby, then please do flick this video on to them. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you next week yeah. um, with a new video. And, and please do visit the blog, www.monkeyandbarefit.com, uh, where we'll be posting regular blog posts as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think this is bye from me, monkey. Yeah. Bye from the bear. Bye and bye. bye from baby Theo. Uh, I think we're going to go and give this guy a little bit of food now because he's saying, Daddy, I want some, I want some food pretty quickly, please. I think so. All right. <laughs> say bye, Bunk. Sure.